Loss of my gamers. Prison dog here. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys. Stay tuned in the next coming of months as I get ready to do my epic rant on Trolls World Tour from 2001. Inside Out Fan 2001 uh, would be on the same boat so as uh, uh, as uh, he's dinosaur obsessed. Oh, this guy, and I will keep contacting him, I'll keep watching his videos, and that's why he is my number one favorite YouTuber on YouTube so far. It's a really beautiful day out here. Oh, I didn't know the camera was on. But let me let me fix it. All right, hey guys, Frozen Three and Stranger Things Studios fan two thousand one here, and today we're gonna be doing a rant on Trolls World Tour fan two thousand one. Now, if you guys don't know about this, he is a YouTuber who has a million subscribers and does nothing but movie reviews. But get this, he hates the mob boy Frozen Things Studios just because he likes the Frozen movies. I mean, who would do such a thing? It's not like 24 Frames of Nick or Shave Frilla has had anything to do with his opinion, right? Right? As well as... Inside would go out and mock and attack him for having different opinions. It makes me wonder, why should we trust him after he's attacked people? You heard it right, ladies and gentlemen. He gave the movie a 1 out of 5 star. Hey guys, this is The Menace, aka Modoc Knows Where You Live Here, and today I'm going to start you guys off with what I'm going to call a controversial opinion. And I know I'm going to get an easy amount of backlash for saying this, but am I the only one who thinks the hate for Trolls World Tour fan has gotten excessive over the years? Now, don't get me wrong, there are justified reasons to dislike Trolls World Tour fan. Whether it be for his homophobic remarks or his hot takes for the sake of a hot take. But as someone who used to hate Trolls World Tour fan, the newer haters haven't been doing it for me ever since 2021. It started to feel like an excessive bandwagon than new people just bringing new things to the table. That isn't to say everyone hasn't been doing a good job. There are a few out there like Ross Johnson or Thadmaster7 who make okay videos. The rest of them just repeat the same talking points, and it's all been a case of been there, done that. Oh, did you guys know that Inside Out fan, he attacks people's opinions? Yeah, he's been doing that for years. Did anyone forget when Inside made a jab at BCG just for a sarcastic take on Sherlock Gnomes? I'm sorry, Black Critic Guy, but how dare you hate this movie? This movie's way better than Shitlock Penis, aka Sherlock Gnomes. Or about that other time where he made fun of Hockey Guy 1 just because he says Shrek the Third and Home are better than the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy. I'm saying Shrek the Third, because that movie's underrated. I respect your opinion, Joker. <laughs> wow, this, this movie's so underrated. I don't get the hate. Way better than the How to Train Your Dragon movies. And remember when I complained about Trolls World Tour fans' community posts? Well, scratch that. 
Nowadays, we get a ton of cookie cutter commentary videos from Aaron Soto and Jonathan Mediashack, both of who repeat the same points over and over and over again, and sometimes their criticism doesn't feel like criticism at all. The day I post my extreme mega killer rant on food fights. And then we have the user base videos influenced by Aaron Soto. So let me get this straight. It's not okay for Trolls fans to make a picture of Frozen getting killed, but it's okay for Aaron to make thousands of videos threatening to beat him up? Quantity over quality. See what I mean? The new detractors are making themselves look bad. Not helping is that they're all from the Frozen community. You know, the same community who collectively hate on him and are run by the same guy who said racial slurs? Why are people so quick to criticize Alex, but aren't quick enough to realize Frozen's no better? Nowadays, I've become completely indifferent with this channel. I've even noticed a few adjustments to it, like he's lightened up over face reviews, he stopped beating the dead horse on the same movies again and again, and even his editing is pretty decent, but there's still room for improvement. But that isn't to say he's not safe from his flaws. Like, it's pretty obvious that he hates on No Time to Die, Mitchells, and Scream 6 just for a hot take. And then there's all the controversies he gets into, like celebrating Bond's death in No Time to Die, which was really distasteful, and his comment on Schaeferilla's car accident. The latter of which, he should have just gave his condolence instead of saying, oh, he got into a car crash but that still doesn't make me want to watch his channel again. But the way Frozen handled it wasn't much better. Nowadays, I think Trolls World Tour fan has the potential to improve, but with all the controversies, hot takes, and him feeling a little similar to other YouTubers, time will tell if he ever escapes his downward spiral. Now that that's out of the way, it's time to show you guys who I'm really going to talk about. Hey guys, this is Trolls World Tour Fan Defender here, and today we're going to be doing a video on someone completely different, and it's Harry Thomas Pictures. What a shocker. Now Harry Thomas has been someone I've wanted to cover for a while, but didn't have the courage because at the time there weren't enough points of contention against him, and what could you really say about him that you couldn't say about Trolls World Tour Fan? Nowadays, I feel like people have been far too nice with Harry in comparison to Trolls World Tour Fan 2001. Whenever Trolls World Tour Fan does something, he's always viled as the worst. But when Harry does something, he's showered with nothing but swan song praise, as well as the, oh, he's a nice guy excuse. And while he does have his good qualities, I enjoy the artwork, I think he does a really good job in the effects and the shading, He's always been known for doing really dumb things that aren't much different from Trolls World Tour fan, especially with how we handled the Blue Sky shutdown. And while this isn't my only point against Harry, it's going to be brought up again later. So, to answer your million dollar question, why do I dislike Harry Thomas more than Trolls World Tour fan 2001? Let's find out. One of my problems with Harry Thomas pictures is his heavy bias for the Disney remakes. Anytime Disney announces they're going to remake a classic, you know he's going to complain, say it sucks, and then shove Walt Disney's Holy Bible down our throats. Now I'd like to make this perfectly clear that I'm not the biggest fan of these remakes, they have no value to me, and they aren't just trying to recapture the same magic for a new audience. So why am I going after someone with similar beliefs? Well, I think you need to understand that it's not that he hates these movies, it's how he does it that I'm bothered by. 
He can say whatever he wants about these remakes and I would be fine, but the stuff he does in those reviews makes him look like a mean-spirited jerk, especially when he goes after fully experienced filmmakers for doing their job. John Favreau, you now suck as a director. First for remaking this and The Lion King. And I am not going to apologize for hating on Jon Favreau. He is now my least favorite director. He's uh, become obsessed uh, with technology that he forgot to include uh, uh, a plot or heart. Uh, who's the true Aladdin villain, Jafar or Guy Ritchie? And uh, this remake was just made by uh, a bunch of uh, jackasses uh, who uh, just uh, cared about one thing. Money, 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 money! So cynical, so dickish. And it's not just the directors he likes to go after. He also nitpicks the cast if they dare give their own spin on the character instead of trying to impersonate the classics. But he's not safe from being a dick to them as well. The Tessa Thompson as Lazy, she she should have also known better than to not be manipulated by the cash that Disney would offer her for this role, but... Not helping is how extremely biased he is about these remakes. He never gives up to a single positive about any of the live-action Disney remakes. I'm not saying he has to love them, I'm saying that can he give at least one good positive? Heck, Trolls World Tour fan was more positive about the Pinocchio remake than Harry Thomas's long, drawn-out, Oh, Robert Zemeckis is a meanie and I'm a victim. Whoa, it's me. <laughs> so yes, everybody involved in this diabolical piece of shit deserves to become donkeys, like the donkeys on Pleasure Island, as punishment for making uh, this uh, monstrosity. So cynical, so dickish. Oh, and his humor is not much better. He uses the names of dead people just to manipulate everyone into hating these remakes even more. The original Peter Pan author would be totally turning in their grave right now. And then we have this greedy Mickey joke that he spams in almost every Disney rant. He has the nerves to criticize Illumination and Pixar for their annoying side characters, yet Mickey just won't put a sock in it. You all thought I was done milking the remake cow of my animated classics. You were wrong. Who is this? I don't know you. Are you from Pixar? And worst of all is how extremely relentless he is about these remakes. You'd think by then Harry Thomas would just take the L and just stop watching these movies because they have no effect on him. But no, he is so desperate to chase every single one of them. He may as well be the cause for Disney's lack of creativity. Animation is so last century, right? Uh, more money for me, because that's what my company has become now, a money-based uh, Because quantity over quality is my studio's motto now, ha ha ha! Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? He also likes to use the same overused and cliched arguments like the nobody asks for it or the it's unoriginal argument. He most certainly does uh, not to ask for, I mean. Yes, we get it. Nobody asked for it. But companies like Disney don't pay attention to what the small audience wants. It's the overall public that determines which films are worth investing in or which movies just become a cult favorite. I mean, we're totally not getting a Mufasa prequel just because of the success of the first movie. And it's not like people were begging for Patty Jenkins to make a Wonder Woman movie or Dean Du Bois to make an entire trilogy about dragons. But that begs the question, why does Harry Thomas care so much about Disney's original ideas? I mean, this man wants Frozen 3, which is a cash grab, but I guess it's better than Disney rehashing their own ideas. But where was Harry when John Carter came out? Or Wrinkle in Time? Or what about uh, Jungle Cruise? You know, that movie had The Rock, it had the Black Adam director. I mean, after all, that was an original movie, right? 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 If the movie used to be a TV show, just don't go. After Roman numeral two, give it a rest.
If it's a remake of a classic, rent the classic. There are times where Harry Thomas can be a massive hypocrite. For an example, when the Lion King remake came out, he was calling it a shot for shot remake of the original movie. But when the Mulan remake comes out and it tries to do something different with the source material, guess what he complains about? I, I am not impressed. Uh, this trailer looks far too dark. Uh, I mean, I can't and then I, I can't believe Disney would remove Mushu or the classic songs from this remake. Look, I know he's gonna hate on these remakes, but can he at least make up his mind? You were hating on these movies for doing the same thing as the originals, but all of a sudden you're hating on them for deviating from them? You just made yourself look like this. I like to hate it, hate it. You like to hate it. But I'm not going to go through every example of Harry Thomas's hypocrisy for one point. I'm just going to go through the one that's the most relevant. Back in 2019, he was heavily promoting his hatred for Dumbo, Aladdin, and The Lion King remake. So much so that he said that they were going to be the death of Disney, which is an unrealistic take when you factor in that the MCU and Toy Story were in that year. And just saying that they're going to be the death of Disney is the same as saying that the company should go downhill. And despite the mixed reactions, Aladdin and Lion King still became the top highest grossing films of 2019. So, let's see how Harry reacted to it. I can't believe that uh, the Lion King remake last year was one of the highest grossing movies of that year. Even with my attempts uh, to convince uh, audiences uh, to skip it, uh, they wouldn't listen. This is another reason as to why I don't like him. He acts like a victim sometimes. He's okay with throwing critics and audience members under the bus for absolutely anything when he's not much better than the people he calls out. Take, for instance, the Dark Phoenix review. Oh, people were prejudging the trailers and acting like it was gonna bomb no matter what. Fandom were extremely on the fence. They were strongly hating on and prejudging the trailers like crazy at the time, like this movie was going to bomb no matter what. Wow, Harry, what an excellent point you've made. How dare those Dark Phoenix critics prejudge a film before it's out? You wouldn't do such a thing. You totally wouldn't. You would never do anything like that. Big round of applause, thumbs up, my guy. Or how about another example? Oh, Disney treats their fans like a bunch of dummies who will pay to see anything Lion King, regardless of whether it's a work of art or a piece of crap. They treat their fans like a bunch of dummies or something, and uh, think that uh, moviegoers uh, will pay to see anything Lion King releases, uh, regardless, uh, of regardless of whether it's a work of art or a piece of shit, and... Uh, Harry, you're genius. You figured it out. I mean, what kind of moron would dare go see Mufasa the Lion King? Uh, people only see it just because it has Disney on it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just had the 2019 flu, but I don't know how to end this. Guys, we have to be more like Harry. Don't be a dummy. Just accept the fact that Disney treats their fans like a bunch of dummies. Aw, oh, man. That's gotta be a memorial quote. You're joking, right? Are you kidding me? Well... Look, I know nitpicking tends to get normalized nowadays, but Harry Thomas is the case of he nitpicks for the sake of nitpicking. And sometimes I question why they even matter. This happens a lot in his Disney remakes, but because of how much I'm talking about them, let's go for more fresher examples. To go with the less favorable example, in his Hotel Transylvania 4 review, he criticizes the humor mainly on the Invisible Man being naked joke. And, and you know uh, that uh, gag of the Invisible Man uh, being uh, naked in that uh, turd of a trailer? Well, yeah, seeing it in the movie was uh, worse than I could have ever imagined. I... I completely and utterly sank into my seat. I give the SpongeBob SquarePants movie five stars out of five. Hooray for SpongeBob! <laughs> if this doesn't convince you how nitpicky he can be, how about the other two? In his Sonic the Hedgehog 2 review, he complained about Shadow being wasted in the movie. Only appears for a, uh, 
a, a, a mid credit scene and how dare you waste Shazo like that. So when he was only in it for a mid credit scene, and I'd argue that by having him play a major part in the film, it would have turned the movie into a convoluted mess. And finally, in his Death on the Nile review, he complains about the movie because Gal Gadot's character dies. It was only when we got to the actual murder parts of the story did I start to truly hate it. Uh, can you guess uh, who the murder victim is? My favourite character in the movie, Gal Gadot's character. Gal Gadot deserves infinitely better th than this. Of all the people you could have gotten to be the murder victim, why Gal Gadot? I just uh, wanted to uh, strangle that uh, part of the script and they uh, killed her off. I wanted to take some scissors and uh, push the editor out of the editing room and cut that scene out. Now I'm no expert on mystery movies, but wasn't her dying supposed to have a point just to the twist? I mean, this is the only point that he ever brings up to the film, and he never explains how it detracts from it. And none of the other uh, cast members uh, gave a performance that was remotely closer to Gal Gadot's or uh, subpar in comparison to Gal Gadot. Because <laughs> it's not going to bring Gal Gadot's character back, is it? It's Heck, Trolls World Tour fan had the exact same point as Harry, and both of them don't bother to explain why it detracts from the film. And a part of my theory is they were only looking forward to the film just because Gal Gadot was in it. Like, people give this one a pass just because it has Gru in it. How bad? How bad can this possibly be? Does anyone notice how Harry Thomas responds to criticism? When Omega Red made his video on the Lion King rant, he told him that he was going to unsubscribe just because he didn't respect his opinion. Which makes me believe he did not watch the video, because despite all the jokingness that Omega Red did, it was pretty clear he was trying to put some sense into him. Or how about when Ross Johnson made his two-part video on his Sonic 2 rant, he called it unnecessary. Come on, Harry, I thought you wanted criticism. I mean, after all, it's not like your words against David Lowry or John Favreau or Sony were any better. So David Lowry is a overrated filmmaker. I don't get the love for him. Reimagining Disney classics, he will get to praise, which to me is lazy filmmaking. He should make more originals if he wants to make more of a mark. Dad, I wish you could just shut your big yapper! <laughs> This is why I believe that Harry Thomas is a bad influence for critics. He will often shun criticism if it isn't in any way kind to him, but he will often say a lot of unkind and mean-spirited stuff about the movie industry. Not helping is that whenever he does get criticism, he does a complete 180 and goes back to being a cold, heartless jerk. Remember what he said about the Mulan remake and how he was going to stop going after Disney and the directors? And don't worry, I'm not going to just go in, you know, the mindset of making up my mind about it or wanting to hate it. And I'm not going to bash or villainize the director for doing their job. I'm going to give Disney a break, don't worry. I'm going to be as fair and open-minded about this remake as I can this time. I guess that's irrelevant now thanks to the Super Mario Brothers movie, as well as the new Mutants. Directors all. Directed is far too much of a stretch by Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jackal. What were they thinking? Uh, they were clearly off uh, their, their meds at the time, so... What is wrong with you, uh, filmmakers? Joshua Boomer should get a taste of his own medicine for what he did uh, to such a beloved superhero franchise. Or what about that apology to wanting Sony and Illumination to shut down? I guess he's still going after Sony after all of their decisions and the five-year-old movie that's already faded into obscurity. Hey, Mr. CEO of Sony, you think this is funny? In a cosmic way, yes. Keep in mind, this is the same man who wants social media to be a better place and that there shouldn't be any negativity. I just hope that one day social media will be a place to spread more love about movies instead of hate. But he does jack to combat that problem. So what I'm left with is, yeah, I agree, but he's not much better. 
Not even his fans are any better, and they'll eat up about anything he makes for them. Even if it's bullying fictional characters. But you can have nostalgia! <laughs> well, if this is your favourite movie of all time, Andy, then you have a weak taste in movies, buddy. <laughs> so cynical, so... Dickish. So when Blocky makes three videos discussing Harry, the only point of contention from his fans is that he was mean. And you know what? They're right. I mean, how dare Blocky say some really mean stuff for the sake of edgy content? Oh wait, who are we talking about again? Oh, right. Yeah, Harry's not much better. And to all the wankers at uh, Sony Pictures Animation that thought uh, that uh, Hotel Transylvania 4 would be a good idea. I'll rephrase what I said to Trolls World Tour fan and bring it over to Harry. Why should we trust Harry if he doesn't take criticism? Did you guys know that Harry Thomas and Trolls World Tour fan were friends once? Yeah, they used to talk with each other in the comment section, and Trolls has always cited Harry as his big inspiration for becoming a better YouTube critic. That is until a difference of an opinion divided both of them, and that's when Harry Thomas cut all ties with Trolls World Tour fan. So nowadays, via the Frozen community, Harry Thomas will often talk badly about Trolls World Tour fan. But I have to ask, what right does Harry Thomas have? Both of them are low-quality film reviewers who favor unpopular opinions, have annoying trends in their videos, and exaggerate everything for views. Whereas Trolls World Tour fan has kind of improved on it, Harry Thomas is still the same as he is. Now I know what you guys are going to say. Oh, well, at least he doesn't attack people for having opinions, just like what Trolls World Tour fan does. No. I find it funny that Harry Thomas would call out Trolls World Tour fan for flipping off critics over Ralph Breaks the Internet, and yet he always goes after Rotten Tomatoes every chance he gets. He has the nerves to call them sexist and biased, yet he's a massive fanboy for Harry Potter and the DCEU. Why again are people giving this guy a pass? And you're telling me, uh, critics, that you rated Peter Rabbit a higher Rotten Tomato score than Venom. Uh, I, I don't trust uh, critics uh, nowadays. Pay no attention to the overly negative and biased critics. I like to hate it, hate it. You like to hate it. Come to think of it, Harry Thomas's flaws sound eerily familiar, guys. I don't know why. I mean, what kind of person bullies critics for no reason? attacks directors, projects their biases about the Disney remake or the DCEU, makes suicidal references, act like they're above everyone else when they really aren't. What have I mentioned before that I haven't mentioned for Harry Thomas yet? I don't know guys, maybe my next point will put my silly conspiracy theory to rest. <laughs> We gotta get content out. We gotta pull in new people. Throw a trans person in one scene and we'll pretend like we're the greatest people in the world. Throw in a gay lead protagonist that can say one line in the whole film that will drive these dudes up a wall and then we can pat ourselves on the back and say, look how progressive we are. Now you can forget about Dumbo. Now you can forget about some of the racist stuff we did in the past because we've learned from our mistakes. About their audience, they just want money. That is literally the only reason. And they want to enforce girl power and shove it down our throats by casting an entire female cast uh, to say, oh, we can make a better movie than the original sexist Ghostbusters ever was. I love girl power. There's literally one white screenshot of her ass. In the ideal summer movie with uh, plenty of uh, girls in bikinis, uh, beaches, uh, see flawlessly, a uh, Black Panther does race equality uh, flawlessly. Uh, Blue Fairy, I hate uh, her new design with a total passion. There was no reason to change her design. She looked gorgeous in the original, but here they made her look like a freaking Wakanda warrior from Black Panther and, and, and the- Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. 
Harry Thomas tries way too hard to be progressive, but it's ruined thanks to his double standards on what's acceptable and what's not. To go more into detail, this man will say that Baywatch from 2017 is an underrated classic. But then he'll hate on Iron Man 2 just because Black Widow was only in it to be hot. And his only argument to prove this is that wide angle of Black Widow's peach showing up on the screen. And, and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, uh, this movie just uh, emphasizes too much on, on making her hotter than giving her a character. There's literally one widescreen shot of her ass. I wouldn't blame uh, uh, female fans of Marvel uh, would, uh, if they were offended by that uh, moment. But here's the thing though. If this man is going to criticize Iron Man 2 just for that one scene of Black Widow being hot, he should also be willing to criticize Baywatch because we get a fair amount of scenes of women only being in it to be hot, especially with Ronnie's scenes. This man gives Black Widow's standalone film a 5 out of 5 stars, but I'm willing to bet he doesn't mention that scene that is not much different from the wide-angle shot he criticizes. So how does that get under his radar, but not this scene in Iron Man 2? Another example of Harry Thomas's progressive picking and choosing is he will often deduct points of a film if they decide to kill off one female character. This has happened plenty of times in the past and present, like Avengers Infinity War, Deadpool 2, Death on the Nile. Heck, he even said that Rambo Last Blood was offensive to women all because they killed off Rambo's daughter. He does uh, rescue his niece uh, uh, and get her and attempts to get her home. They kill her off. So you're telling me the entire plot of this movie, the purpose of this movie, to rescue his niece and bring her home safe was all for nothing. It, it led to nothing. The what? That is the unhappiest, worst, shittiest ending of the entire year. And I can uh, gladly state that uh, this is the most uh, offensive and disrespectful movie uh, to a woman I have seen in 2019. But I think I found the most notorious example of Harry Thomas's insincerity and double standards. In his Peter Rabbit reviews, he criticizes Domino Gleason and Rose Byrne because he believes they're only in it for sex appeal. The first time he says it, he tells Sony to basically commit suicide. Domino Gleason and Rose Byrne were just cast in this movie for sex appeal. They're actually promoting sex appeal and he hots young actors in a Peter Rabbit movie. Sony, seriously, go fuck yourselves, go jump off a fucking cliff. Like, Mr. and Mrs. McGregor are, uh, are, are supposed to be an elderly couple, not so uh, young. Like, they only casted young actors for sex appeal. But he's a hypocrite on two occasions. Number one, in the Peter Pan and Wendy review, he criticizes the film for, get this, lacking sexual tension. After he just criticized the Peter Rabbit films for having sex elements. And there's none of the sexual romantic tension between Peter, Wendy and the other females in Neverland. That was one of the entertaining parts of the original, the fact that all the girls were jealous that uh, Wendy was, uh, was uh, the girl that got to spend all the time with Peter. And number two, Harry Thomas posted something in his community post that I found very interesting. It's a new project that he has that's called Moose on the Loose, and you know what? Let's go check it out. All right, as you can see, I'm at this man's official YouTube account, and we are going to scroll down to see that new project he has. All right, of all the posts. Ah, there it is. Say, this plot sounds really intriguing, but I have to ask something. Why is that woman only in her undergarments? By that logic, aren't you also promoting sex appeal, Harry? All right, guys, I think I'm done complaining. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to take a break from YouTube and- So Amber, um, uh, I still stand with you and uh, I hope she can get her life and career back uh, somehow. No. He is not defending who I think he is defending, right?
Uh, I, I stand with J.K. Rowling until the end, you know. Harry, we gotta talk, buddy. You are officially the most inconsistent, untrustworthy studio areas. Now, I don't take this as me saying he shouldn't be excited for the next Aquaman movie. That I'm okay with. But what he shouldn't be doing is defending people behind those projects who are especially known for doing bad things in real life. But, because Harry Thomas is so gullible and cares so much about girl power, he actually defends Amber Heard and J.K. Rowling. That's right, an actress who not only abused Johnny Depp, but also lied to him over his job, and transphobia. Harry? Use your common sense! Oh wait, it looks like Harry Thomas didn't use common sense when it comes to defending abusers, now did he? And I don't like the ways he tries to actually defend both of them, because in context, it makes him look sexist, and I have said time and time again, a major hypocrite. So he's okay with people hating on Ezra Miller. He's okay with demonizing filmmakers for doing their job. But he will actually defend an abuser and transphobia and call any of their hate thems toxic without a single pinch of evidence. And I honestly think that some will have moved on from the from the Amber Heard hate by then. I think the hate for Amber Heard has gotten too far at this point and has become toxic. People will act like she's the worst person on the planet. Come on, there are far worse people than her. Did she murder anyone? Did she declare war on a country? No. And she's still, in my eyes, the, the uh, perfect mirror. Heck, I even called him out on his Amber Heard and J.K. Rowling bias, and do you want to know what he replied with? Oh, at least they're human. DCU and Wizarding World's good, but Disney remakes are bad, even though they all do the same thing and are just profiting off of corporate heads. This is the part that made me lose all respect for Harry Thomas' YouTube channel. At least with Trolls World Tour fan, he's so bad he's good. Harry Thomas is so bad he's straight up intolerable. From his Disney remake bias, to bullying filmmakers, to not learning his lesson, hypocrisy on so many levels, he tries way too hard to be an advocacy for girl power, but he contradicts it. And worst of all, he actually defends transphobia and an abuser. And until he improves, I refuse to go back to his channel. You don't say. Weird. It's almost like I knew it from the get-go. So in conclusion, despite all of my criticism established, I don't recommend you guys to go out and attack him. If you just want to give him criticism, do it in a respectful manner. But you're not gaining any benefit out of attacking him. And that ends my video. Alright? That's all that needs to be said. I gotta go back to playing The Last of Us Part 1 on the PlayStation 5. So anyways, see ya guys! And to the people who are still... And to the people who are still bombarding Fantastic Beasts and uh, the DCU uh, with um, nothing but hate, I say to them, just grow up and, uh, you know, let the fans, uh, uh, like myself included, in enjoy uh, the franchises. I mean, and the people who have worked on Fantastic Beasts, uh, Mads uh, included, say, what's a, uh, well, lovely experience this is uh, to uh, be on us, uh, so... And and uh, uh, plus, are you just uh, giving the franchises more toxic hate? So is is not helping. It's uh, it's uh, only extending uh, the the problems. Uh, but I like to hate it, hate it. You like to hate it. <laughs>